I mean, if if somehow they let Marana through after seeing a Ricky, then uh, that's a big, big problem in their drafting. But, you know, they, they make sure they don't do that. Um, do you think we might see any other repeats going into this game? Like any other heroes we saw in the previous one? I might see the the sniper. I do think that sniper was a big part of uh, why Bumis was able to hold on for so long. Mm -hmm. um, so that could be an option for them. For Fnatic, I didn't think that Gabby's tear blade was the winning factor. Like, yes, he farms, he did damage, but I thought his impact was actually less than Natsumi's sniper, which I'm sure fans of the chat are going to appreciate either way, you know, and uh, no matter what you say in this situation. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's, there's a couple of Gabby fans out there, which I'm sure will be upset to hear such words, but, you know, we got to lay down the facts. we got to do it. It's, it is part of the job. The facts as we see them, you know, which is yeah. Uh, yeah. always funny. It's like, you don't know, what we see and what other people see can be very different. And that's always a fun thing, perspective. That it is. That it is. Well, so the Primal Beast got taken out there from Boom Esports. Make sure Armel doesn't get that again, because he was able to do a lot of work in that previous game. And Bane is actually the pickup. That is a classic counter to a Pangolier. Yes, it is. And again, this really, they like, there's no chance now that Tusk will not be uh, a core hero, right? You pick the Bane, the Rubik, that feels like it's going to be your support duo. Fnatic, they might consider taking Mars. That is, oh, sorry, no, that, that, I mean, sorry, but Miswaj might consider taking the Mars here because they have a BZ on their side, or they could give him the Tusk. Brewmaster is the pickup here. Very, a hero that just could not care less about the Bane, you know? You split, you can do whatever you want, and Bane has no answer. Mm -hmm. Fan Fanatic, you've got the Ricky and the Dark Willow, so you have a good amount of this damage and follow up. Decent front line with the Pango and the Broodmaster, along with the team fight. Late game scaling is a bit weak, though. Fanatic, the obviously their carry hasn't been picked yet, but they're gonna have to pick a pretty hardcore carry to, to go late. Yeah, definitely. And BB Sports actually deciding now to pick up the Life Stealer um, yeah. rather than, you know, saving their carry for the final pick. But I mm -hmm. suppose it makes sense, you know. Lifestealer versus the Brewmaster, that's kind of a fine lane. Plus, Lifestealer can put an early point into Rage to just make sure he gets yep. out of the Brambles. Should, yeah, pretty much has a pretty fantastic lane just there. And they leave their final pick as their off laner to potentially mm. shut down Gabby if they can get a favorable sort of, you know, matchup in that regard. And also, they keep the Tusk flexible, right? If you're a fanatic, you're like, is it Tusk off lane? This is Tusk mid. You are going to have to guess it. They do believe it's going to be your Pajasters, which is. What, you know, I've been also harping on about saying that's what they're, they're going to go for. Boom Esports, they, uh, they need to get a of a carry that they can't deal with. Morphling would be one of them. I would say the Terrorblade, like before I wasn't feeling the Terrorblade bad, now I feel a little bit more. Rifle versus Terrorblade is not a fun matchup later on. Mm -hmm. So definitely, yeah, definitely a TB ban makes sense. Uh, How do you feel about, like, Phantom Assassin? Does, do you think that could be alright for Fnatic? To play well, my worry about... Now, my worry about that is that the Bane can, Rubik's Tusk can control her. You know, Lifestyle would go Silver Edge. I'd rather you go for something like a, the reason I like the is because it's illusion based. Mm -hmm. If not, it's like, it's like something that's hard to control. It doesn't have to be something that gives you a whole ton of damage. As long as it's hard to control, you have damage coming up from the Dark Willow, from the Pangolier, Brewmaster, Ricky, not so much, but you have good control coming up from these guys. So you're not starved for damage too much. Like, it doesn't have to be, you know, some divine rapier carrying kind of hero. Just just a, a, a core that's hard to bring down. Slark is in the pool, I wouldn't mind the Slark. Yeah. Well, that could definitely be a potential Ur pickup there for Gabby. Or Ursa, right? I mean, Ursa would be... Yeah. I feel pretty optimum. Hard for the Boomy to deal with, and of course, yeah, Terrible is going to be gone, so Ursa, Slark, one of them is going to go for Fnatic. Who's it going to be? Monkey King, neither. <laughs> I was going to say, it was on the tip of my tongue, sir. No, I didn't think that Monkey King would they'd be going for it, but interesting choice. Mm. Okay, so... Yeah. Monkey King versus the Lifestealer. That's not like an obvious sort of counter, like the core matchup later on, but is it mainly there for like a advantage in the laning phase, perhaps? Uh, well, to be fair, when, when we, I mean, when Monkey King was picked, we didn't even know who was going to be the off player. It is going to be uh, FBZ on the max. He's gonna have to perform like crazy on this hero. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I 
I kind of, I don't know, Fnatic's draft is interesting, you know, you got the Monkey King with the, with the Pangolier, so you can fight in this zone, Dark Willow has a Terrorize, it can be very helpful to you, I love the Dark Willow skin, by the way, I like it, and of course you have the pickoff coming out from jean well on the Ricky, so it's all decent, but we want a bit more, like, execution-based, especially with the Magnus, the Bane, like, these heroes, if you get your ultimates off, they're great, if you don't, uh, see, Rubik, depends on what you can steal, not that m like, there's some decent spells to steal. Everything from the Dark Willow, Pangos, okay. But, again, no Fissure, Ice Path, big ultimate like a, like a Black Hole to take. It, no. A lot of it falls, again, on your podge to make space on the Tusk. If he does, I still favor Fnatic about 60-40, I'd say. Yeah. Go leaning on the old Fnatic train once again. Actually, you said Boom mm -hmm. last game, didn't you? What did you? I did, but I mean, uh, to be fair, when when the game is sixty-two minutes, I think any, any yeah. whatever you say is fine. Uh, it could have gone either way at that point. Yeah, no, I I agree with you there. Um, but yeah, I I I think I've leaned slightly towards Fnatic as well. The one thing they've got to be careful in their safe lane is obviously the versus mm. the Rubik Magnus. You know, we've seen it again and oh, again yes. in the past. Telekinesis into the skewer under the tower, and that could be an easy kill. Um, fortunately enough. For them is that the position five Ricky probably shouldn't fall prey to that because you know you can trick to the trade and then blink strike out whatever the hell it's called and then he should be able to get out of range of the tower but Monkey King definitely not going to be so fortunate if he gets caught out. Yeah, that's a, that's why I was wondering if they want to consider putting DJ there because uh, well you can shatter realm and the tower won't hit you either and mm -hmm. it's kind of better. Uh, you can just bramble maze behind the Magnus. You'll never be able to screw screw away. So. Uh, but no, they do want to make sure DJ gets a bit more farm priority. Jean well on the is going to play the Ricky. To be fair, a lot of times, oh god, this works. Armel calls this match El Trashico. That is no, it's not. This is El Clasico between the two guys who got two teams who got relegated. But still, El, El Clasico to me. Definitely. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a pretty bold statement to say. Seems how they barely took that first game as well. Like. It, oh! Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's like, oh, that is wow. Them's, okay, them is fighting words. Oh yes. He, maybe he knows what he does. Actually, boom. Recently, there was a tweet that someone's going to be joining the team. I'm not sure if it's like a coach, some sort of manager or something. Maybe a content creator. Who knows? But oh, Gabby. That was, I gotta say, that felt a little salty. Like that, it felt salty. Really, really did. Uh, you mm. know, I was expecting a bit more sportsmanship to come out in this mm. series, but uh, I should have known. It is SEA. <laughs> <laughs> At, you know what I'm grateful for? They gave it to us in English, so we know exactly who's flaming who in what yeah. way. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, we're, we're thankful for it. You know, we get to see where all this, the BM is coming from. Who's getting salty? That's what we like. <laughs> all right, so let's look at the laning stage. Bottom lane, uh, feels like very hard to kill the Brewmaster. You know, even the Dark Willow should be generally okay. X Nova might be taking some damage, and I, I would worry the most about him. You know, I don't think DJ KP or KPII, as some people call him, uh, or Natsumi are going to be in any danger of losing their life. No, it shouldn't be. It's just going to be a slow, steady trade of harassment here and there, you know. If someone potentially steps out of position and gets caught from a bramble, like X Nova, mm -hmm. nice little juke there through the trees, manages to find the opening to escape. But yeah, it should just be relatively even trading. How do you think this uh, top lane's going to go? Uh, I favor Boom here, you know. It's a, it's a Rubik Magnus. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do too much against the Ricky, but... Uh, it's gonna be go. It could be scary as well for them, right? Like if if Zephyr uses their lift wrong and John will could just jump and slow him, Gabby could get some kills. It's really it goes either way, but I favor Boom slightly more, you know. Yeah, and they definitely have just got the the superior harassment for sure. Just the shockwave spam with the fade bolt as well. It makes it quite difficult for them to try and weather that storm. But yeah, I mean, the fact that they don't have any like stuns either, which makes it difficult. And Jarl goes for the Orb of Venom level 1. Interesting. Don't often see this, but the slow does add up. However, it's hard for him to get close. Rubik is just a you know, pretty durable position uh, position 4, and he's got the Magus beefy in front of him. So I, uh, yeah, again, I'm slightly favoring Boom in the top lane. Just like I slightly favor Fnatic in the bottom lane. Sorry, bottom lane Fnatic, top lane Boom. Yeah, and then mid. 
Or is this is or is mid just bang on even? Bang on, but I think your podge is. I don't, I won't say he's better than Armad. Like this is one of those things. But I think that he's going to be doing a little bit better in the laning stage. He's used to snowballing, and he snowballs because he often wins the laning stage. So I would trust his mechanical skills just a slightly bit, just a tiny, a smidge, a smidgen more. <laughs> and I do think I, I prefer the Tusk over the the Pang because he's tankier during the laning stage as well. Yeah. I could definitely play a big part. I mean, it's just leading slightly in terms of CS. But I mean, if Armel manages to grab these two other creeps, then it'll literally be one different. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is very, very even indeed. Uh, do you think we could see some like supports rotating in to try and net a, a kill, or is that just quite unlikely to happen? I mean, Rubik and Dark Willow could rotate in, but uh, maybe we'll see them at the four-six minute just to get those uh, those ruins secured. Both of these heroes do want to go for it and. Making sure that the other guy doesn't get could, is a big win for your side. So that's why that's why I'm thinking like it's just going to be rotations for the water ruins and the power ruins, and maybe from that they transfer into a gank. Yeah, we'll see if that does come about. Everyone's just very comfortably farming away. You can see on the top as well. No one's health bars are really dropping that low. Everyone's very very mm -hmm. healthy. And uh, by the way, the one thing we mentioned is that it's Magnus versus four melee heroes. You know, that is uh, mm. that's like a, an invitation to get RP'd hard. You know? That is. Like, oh yes, you got Monkey King. To be fair, that the Brewmaster split in the Pango roll does do a lot to mitigate that. And good luck catching Jean well with an RP. Like it can happen, but something that was very unlikely. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh... Yeah, not quite as easy as it as it sounds on paper there with the four melee heroes, but you know, even with that, this could be one of those games where you only ever manages to get like one man RPs, because <laughs> that does happen every now and then. Still worth it. Depends on the one guy you RP, right? Yeah. That's and uh, Xnova taking some hits, and so is DJ though. And uh, DJ actually has a blightstone. Yeah, it's really valuing that in minus two armor. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, Gabby could have been in danger then. If Zephyr had his uh, telekinesis off cooldown, that could have been a tower skewer for sure, but very fortunate of him that he did not have that up. It was close. Uh -uh. Well, jean -Noel. Sometimes we see the position for, with like the support Ricky do a lot in the laning stage. This time, not so much, you know. It just feels like he's able to get some farm. Gabby's actually suffering a little bit in this matchup. And, uh, so it is going a little bit as we predicted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure they would like someone to come along and make some space eventually. Uh, I mean, the Pangolin oh, is level 5. Ooh, getting pretty low. Zephyr actually tossing back defensively there. But he manages to get those Jingu stacks online. FPZ just skewering away, making sure he does not get hit by that ability. But ooh, bound to strike. Yeah, straight back up to full wow. HP. Wow. That's perfectly balanced. Man. That doesn't seem right, because I, I was looking at the 200 and I was like, oh, okay, so if he bounces, this, he's probably going to get like 200. He's like, no, no, he gets like 400 and just is just fine. Okay. Standard stuff, standard stuff. Meanwhile, in the mid, X Nova. I think he's just setting up for the six minute rune. I don't think they really have the opportunity to go for a circuit. I mean, actually, Yopage is six, whilst Armel was five. It's going to be you know. difficult, though. It'll be six after these couple of creeps die, but no, I, X Nova, I just want to make sure. Like we said, right? It's going to be, I do not want him to get any ruins, and unfortunately, Armel will not. X Nova gets an arcane rune. Oh! That's going to be some pings from uh, your pods. Like, hey! Oh, top lane? Yeah. Three on three. Chuck it away, skewer away. FPC should be safe. X Nova making his own rotation up here. The sleep just getting bounced between the two supports right now, trying to sure. disengage, but it doesn't matter. There's overwhelming amount of damage. They get the two kills. And DJ, the only survivor, they, that nightmare from X Nova just had such value, just bouncing between the two supports. They were like trying to disengage, just did not have the space. I hear that, the arcane rune, he may have stolen it away from his mid, but it, it, it helped out. He got his value out of it, you know, your punch is like, okay, that one's acceptable, you know. If you can, if you can get a triple, sorry, double kill with it, you're allowed to take my ruins. So, <laughs> uh, well, huge uh, start from Boom Esports right now, taking out the enemy carry. And FBC is having a very good game. The only, one of the big reasons why Fnatic won the previous games is that they shut him down. FBC is not being shut down at all in this game. Uh, but KP looks like he might get shut down right now. As Yopaj made his own rotation. He's still very tanky right now. Takes a lot of beatings. 
has got the uh, TP off cooldown, but obviously Yopar is holding the yeah, snowball. Yeah. Now gonna have to commit it right now. He's got another punch at six. KP, can he just TP out? Nah, he can't. Too much damage. Eventually, they kill him, but that took a long old time. Yeah. And yeah, as a result, uh, Natsumi has to TP back to the tower before he loses out on too much CS. Vanguard, uh, evasion, extra movement speed. Not easy to bring down the Brewmaster, but they did in the end. And uh, Boomy Sports continuing this aggression. FBZ is still at level 5. Armelli wants to start off this fight, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a pretty you know, deep dive to get this. It really is. Armelli's already committed the Rolling Thunder, and yeah, unfortunately for them, it just ends up being a, a gank that goes the way of Boom. Even Zephyr is here. Wanted to maybe try and get the potential catch onto Armel. Telekinesis is dragged away. The rune is there. It's regen, but Zephyr just denies it right in front of his face. Armel in some danger. The sleep gets taken away there from DJ. But Armel just nerves of steel holding onto that swashbuckle for absolutely ages. Uh, a little bit of uh, stacking coming out for uh, Boom Esports side. They have about one stack in their triangle. So that might be a good thing for them if they can get these going. You do have the Magnus who you know, can accelerate anyone's farm and... Natsumi, he's just been left completely alone. He's got 24 denies. KP's got 28 last hits, so just Oof. a massive victory. That is, that is very, very big. I mean, yeah, despite the fact that, as we saw, the Beastmasters, uh, not Beastmasters, sorry, the Brewmasters, hard to kill, but he's still not really getting too much out of the lane. We were up top, that's General, he was able to get away. Yeah, that's why Natsumi's level 7 and KP's, uh, KPII is still level 5. Wow. That's actually pretty big. As you can see, him just constantly get run out. Every time we look down, bot KP is just trying to run himself away, and Natsumi is just on his on his tail, just whacking away. Well, for Fnatic, I'm trying to think of when it gets better. There, I mean, they also have saw a team fight with the Wukong, but well, we got engagements here, Jean Well. Yeah. Engagement. That was engagement. <laughs> yeah, he just. Disappeared. We will know the rest of the team actually coming in. Maybe they'll try and turn this around. Gabby with the help of Armel. Gonna get the initial kill onto X Nova. Zephyr caught in the trees. So it ends up being a two for one trade there for Fnatic. Potentially not even done yet. Armel did swash buckling aggressively, but maybe we'll decide to fall back. But still, yeah, two for one. That's pretty good there for Fnatic. Yep. Finally, they get something going on the board. Not giving away all these, not bleeding more kills in that situation. Johnwell, he's got. Nothing, honestly. He's got magic stick, orb of envy. He doesn't even have boots. He might not be able to get the shard at the 50 minute mark. And that's kind of crucial. Like, you pick Ricky for this overpowered shard. Yeah, definitely. And the Yopar's also in some danger right now. And that's a nice dodge there of the Guilty Crown with the Illusion Rune. Fantastically timed. Allows to just disengage. Even KP made a rotation here towards the mid, but. Fnatic not actually able to get anything out of it. So, yeah, very nicely done there from the Tusk. Great ruin control from Boom. This is, what, the second time? Third time? That they... No, I think this is the third ruin that Fnatic is unable to get. First, X Nova took the Arcane. Then uh, we saw uh, Zephyr deny regen. And now the Illusion Ruin keeps Yopaj alive. Like, uh, just Boom Esports prioritizing Yopaj early on, knowing that Natsumi is fine. And uh, FBC is also having a decent laning phase this game. Yeah, definitely. Rushing the blink dagger, interesting. No auras, no nothing. Straight up blink. Uh, that's proper classic way of playing the mag if ever I've seen one. But speaking of the mag, in some danger, does manage to get the skewer away. KP though, still on the chase. Rolling thunder commit and the ultimate. We wanted to turn around with the ult, but unfortunately for him, just the control came out too early, and that is a dead old mammoth. Poor FBZ. He wants to play like, you know, the honorable men of old with the Blink Dagger boots build, but uh, yeah, still is not the Blink Dagger. And they spawn out this, uh, this uh, triple stack here. But now they were, like, this could, this would be a bit of a steal for them. You know, Boomy Spar spent time getting the stack off. In fact, just walks in and gets it. Yeah, that's it's going nice to take a while for KP. It's going to take KP a while to get it, though. Yeah, not when Armel just decides to take them all one swash buckle. <laughs> it's like, yeah, thanks for getting them low for me, buddy. I'll, I'll take that now. But meanwhile, that was going on. Um, the tier one tower bot did actually end up falling down. So that's a very early objective pickup there for Boom. Yeah, we've talked about the value of this tower, though. It's really mm. not that much. And, well, of course, you know, you are going to be happy with the deck. Slightly more, slightly, you know, a bit more map control. And as well as the chance to, as well as, of course, the extra goal injection for the whole team. Mm -hmm. And look at that. Bo Fnatic, they've got stacks going for themselves as well. Natsumi, is he going to spot it out? He does. 
It's like, guys, there's things here we can contest. And just the two doubles for now. But, I mean, they are coming on in. FBZ. This will be a blink dagger reveal. And it's going to be DJ. Actually, is this normal? Invis there jumps up go. to the high ground. Right, RP commit. Wants to go for that very high priority kill of the Pangolier. The Terrorize, though, lands onto three of them. Armel super oh. low. But those right clicks from that Sumi. Oh, there was literally one little tap left in him. And just about enough for Boom to grab the two kills and the tier one tower. Successful blink reveal. Mm -hmm. Good job by FBZ and Nova also made sure that you know the fight did, like uh, there was any sort of disruption coming out from uh, from DJ over there. So overall, Boomy Sports perfect coordination in that situation, and they get the tier one. This is looking like they might be able. We might be going for a game three if this keeps up. Gabby yeah. is farming, but not seeing much from KP and Armel. Not shut down. I mean, he does scale well to the late game, but. That uh, that hurt. The Diffuse Blade is going to be delayed quite a bit. Yeah, definitely. Not quite the way they'd like this game to be going so far, that is for sure. And 4k gold behind. Looks like so they tried to go on FBZ, Death but even he was able to evade yet again. And uh, up top, Natsumi working on his second tier 1 tower. You know, you don't normally think as a life stealer as one of those, you know, tower hitting heroes, but hey, he's doing pretty damn good so far in this game. Yeah, to be fair, with the Orb of Corrosion and the Deso, like these two items stack. By the way, the Orb of Corrosion does not stack with the Blightstone, it only stacks with the Deso. Uh, you do reduce arm like the, the armor from the towers quite, quite a bit, you get a tiny bit of damage. It's. I agree with you, he's not the best, but the Orb of Corrosion makes a huge difference. Yeah, it definitely does. I'm seeing it working yeah. well so far. And uh, so, what do Fnatic really need to do to start bringing this game back down to an even stand in? Like, is it. I, I don't know, is it like just Armel with the, the Brewmaster? They just got to try and look for fights and actually never mind, it looks like a fight has found them. Shanuel getting skewed back, but they're actually going to now commit the Brew Ultimate. See if they can focus the people down right now. KP, uh, FBZ, sorry, he's pretty tanky, but even he can't withstand all of that. Yopage with his haste rune just about running out right now. And instead, Zephyr's going to be the one that gets caught. Double kill there for Armel. And even, they got the Cyclone grab on towards the old Tusk as well. Looks like he's going to be the third casualty here for Boom Esports. Absolutely nothing they could do to keep him alive. Alright, so, <laughs> I, was, I was saying, what do they need to do? And that is it. That, 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 that what just happened, that was a lot that he needed to do a lot of that. But, uh, John Wells still very far from the, from the shards. About 500 gold, it's not too bad. That, that fight, that luckily he was able to stay alive, was able to contribute, get some of those assist gold. And because of that, that shot is not going to be too delayed. You can't rely on that happening too often. You know, this you, you know, they caught Boom Esports unaware. But with a shard on the Ricky, they can get some pickoffs, and especially with a Monkey King jumping. Oh, Monkey King! Uh, yeah, has been caught. Now it's going to be the Fiend Script locking him in place. Bounder Strike even stolen away for good measure. And FBZ, you know, not interested at risking the possibility of Gabby escaping and does just commit the old RP. Because why not? Meanwhile, uh, Natsumi was able to solo DJ. Yeah, his, his TP was on cooldown and Natsumi just ran him down. Easy peasy kill. Meanwhile at the bottom, sleep locking onto KP, but Jeez. not really follow up. But instead, mid is where the next kill was found. Januel drops. Right, okay, so Fnac make a good move. They win a little mm -hmm. fight, but then they split and then all just start dying again. Let's be fair, is that not the game, the name of the series so far? Like game one, how many times it was it that Fnatic made a good move and Boom Esports was like, there's a slightly like almost as good and then the game goes in favor of Fnatic and this game is the exact opposite. Boom does a good move, Fnatic counters, it's slightly weaker and then the advantage continues to grow for uh, for Boom Esports. Yeah, I mean what's the win probably at now? 63% there into the favor of Boom, not absolutely humongous difference there mm. but they're you know, still a comfortable position to be in. Stolen oh. Boundless misses there on towards DJ? the old Dark Willow but yeah, there's no way to escape. DJ is just a goner. Oh, Terrorize even gets stolen away there. That's pretty big. Let's see what Zephyr's going to be able to do with that spell. I mean, th this is a stolen Terrorize against the Monkey King as well. So, uh, Wukong's command is just going to get countered. It's very powerful. I mean, we've said before, anything from the Dark Willow is pretty damn good. The Rolling Thunder is also pretty good. Um, yeah, like that's just in general. Like, you know, Rubik has a good target for him to always focus on stealing. That's going to be a triple, no, sorry, a quad stack of Ancients if Zephyr gets this one right. That is a big chunk of money. It is, especially when you have a, when you have a guy on your team who can give it, who can empower. Are they going to give it to you, Apache? 
My, I wouldn't mind if they do, you know, because uh, that, that's the problem with the Tusk. We all say he doesn't can't farm. You give him this nice stack, it will help him stay relevant. I mean, still have, like scale even more. Mm. Oh, let's see if they decide to do. Obviously, they changed their mind a little bit, moving outside of the triangle, but they have gone into the Roche pit instead. But Fnatic making this smoke move. Shanua smokes Ooh. about to break, so they got the vision. He immediately gets gone on himself, though. Can he survive? Managed to get the tricks of the trade-off and the jump to the high ground, so he does manage to evade death. Now the potential turnaround could come here from Fnatic. Four staff pushing Yopage out. RP as well as the Fiend's Grip. Lock it down onto the Panga, but the three-man boundless did absolutely huge work. The Terrorize was there trying to make a little bit of space. And it looks like the majority of Boom be able to disengage FBZ with the quick blink dagger as well. Somehow, <laughs> oof, I was going to say, somehow nobody dies, but X Nova, he does get picked off at the very end. Uh, and Yopaj, he, he's, got inf he's infested with Nasumi. They want to go for more. Can they get Armel? They're going for it. Oh! That's a big kill. Punch up mid dive as well. And Armel just disintegrates. Natsumi able to avoid the terrorize there with the rage, but doesn't look too interested in forcing out for anything more. But regardless, Pango Wait. dead for 30. Can they can they just go back into the Roche pit? Uh, you still play against Wukong, and you know we know you don't have RP, there's no Fiend's Grip. Gabby, if you can get on top and throw out the Wukong, it could scare Boom Esports off. I mean, they don't have uh, Panda Split either. It's all up to Gabby's decision. He seems like he wants to just go and farm, realizing that it's very risky to take this fight. I mean, it's, it's a slow Roche, though. Hey, it's a very slow one. And they see the wards, they know it's there. Yeah, he finds the high ground one. The, the low ground sentry there just barely misses the, the obs right outside the pit, unfortunately. You know, we've had those, you've had those, I'm sure, in the past. You put down one sentry, but you find two obs. And that's like, that's oh, like, that's the best. that is support Christmas right there. That is just the dream. Like, it is so good when that happens. You always also go like, what an idiot. Who put two wards in the rage? But... <laughs> I don't even care, just the gold, the experience, oh my lord. Yeah. It, I, it must be what like a core feels like, like an Ogre Magi where he gets the, the like a triple hand of Midas. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just immediate cult, uh, gold and XP injection. Just feels so good. Unfortunately, Rex Nova, he does miss out on that, which uh, I'm sure if he watches the replay, he'd be like, damn it, <laughs> just a few units down. Oh well. But still, Age is now into the hands of Boom Esports. Uh, Natsumi, the one to have that. But the rest of the squad doing a smoke maneuver without him. Just going to land to keep on farming up while they make some more space. And they do find a wild Dark Willow. Nice tumblers up to the high ground, actually. They're pinging it out. Yeah, they get the vision threat that is up there. Telekinesis is going to drag them back down. But it looks like the rest of Fnatic want to try and contest this fight right now. Gabby jumps in with the Rolling Thunder. They've got good connections so far on towards Yopage. Is there any further support to come out? No, there is not. So it ends Nova? up being a pretty decent trade there for Fnatic with the extra flavor of X Nova on top. Two for one. Very happy, very happy uh, move for, for, for Fnatic just now. And uh, the, you can see this was the first fight with the shards on the Ricky. And it took him a while. He got like 90 minutes, 30 seconds, but already it's paying, it's paying off. He was able to control FBZ quite a bit in that fight. Fnatic slightly behind now, but with the shot on the Ricky, as crazy as it sounds, the comeback might be beginning for them. It definitely could be. They have brought down that net worth advantage a little bit. Just 2k now for Boom. Uh, looks like they're going to be able to do some damage to this tier 2 tower. Glyph gets forced. And we'll just force Natsumi to disengage. And they actually TP quite a few people up here. Natsumi's going to carry and hit in the tower. This could be the engagement on oh. fight. Oh, what a read there from Natsumi to get that rage off. Gonna get the kill onto tower, but actually Dark Willow, the DJ, gets the deny. Very nicely done. By the way, still now we still haven't seen a Wukong, you know? Like the whole game we have not seen a Wukong. Gabby very conservative with it, does not want to throw it for no reason. No, true, but there's another RP though. And that's gonna be a free kill onto Armel. That's pretty nice. Yeah, a little tasty pick up there. Bumps up their advantage a bit more. Let's see what else they're gonna do. Charge it down towards the mid where they see KP farming up onto the creeps. You will disengage in time, not going to get caught out. John one needs to be careful here. You know, it's uh, he's a Ricky, he's very fragile. They want to go on Natsumi, two minutes on the Aegis, so it's uh, it's like kind of worth it to kill him now because he's going to have it for a while, but it's also like two minutes. Do we just give him a little bit of the map control and we take the fight, you know, an easier fight once down? Mm -hmm. And uh, they're just very happy to farm on Fnatic. 
BKB is up on Gabby along with the Battle Fury. We have on KP. He's going for the Spirit Vessel. Sorry, on, on the Spirit Vessel. It's pretty good if you can get it on the Life Stealer. Unfortunately, like the Rage is just a big counter for you in that situation. Yes, uh, you're only going to get like a couple of seconds duration of the Spirit Vessel actually in before it gets immediately removed. So it's uh, yeah, not the most ideal counter in the world, but if they can get some good uses, it will be something. Meanwhile, five man smoke from Fnatic. Immediately, Zephyr does get spot. Bounder Strike still gets the connection. That is 100% a dead Rubik. Actually, he managed to get a couple of spells off the very least, just delaying it. Oh, that'd be Z. Meanwhile, big lockdown. The shards what just trapping shards. him in. And they have a free grab there on towards the Magnus. Everyone else disengaging. Snowball from Yopar is just trying to make some space. But this is just a proper runaway right now. Can he actually escape? I don't think so. And the Cyclone. Oh. oh. A bit of miscommunication there, but regardless, they should still be able to find this kill, or will they? Kipar's just really making it work for it right now. All right, that I gotta ask something that I'm not quite sure. Like, how, oh, look at that! They got a, that's they know he's there. That's Sumi. Does that have a TP scroll? Oh, he might that, be dead. That is a huge mistake to get caught without a TP. He's got to try and stand his ground. First life gone. Uh, there is Zephyr and Nova, but they're like, nah, you're dead, buddy. Uh, we're not getting involved. Well, that's a very, very nice pick off there for Fnatic. And just like that, balance this game out right away. Actually, maybe not even we done. KP Zephyr. found a potential grab here onto Zephyr. Can he get away? There is the answer. That's a second death. And uh, like, yeah, he's a support, but he's a very farmed support. Two deaths in a row like that is a huge econ economical win for Fnatic. Along with, of course, getting the Aegis out of the hands of uh, Natsumi, getting the uh, Tier 1 tower. And Fnatic, for the first time in the entire game, have a net worth advantage. Yeah, and is that also win probability? Yes, it is. 60% now for themselves. All right, that's a big old swing of momentum. I gotta ask something. How yep. do you feel when two people on the same team get a Desolator? Do you think you like it or you don't like it? Um, it feels very clunky and awkward. Mm. But since they brought out the change where, you know, you can scale and get damage, it's not as bad. But, mm. yeah, it definitely still feels a bit more awkward. But, um, I mean, I suppose the um, Tusk and Life Seeder, generally they're going to be focused on different targets, so it might not be too yeah. bad. So, I mean, what, well, Yopash? <laughs> Just shows his death slayer very nicely there. Gets a free oh. kill to DJ. And there's one of those cliff spots. Gets cancelled. RP also locked down to the two of them. Boom. Nalix are taking a massive fight right now. Stolen boundless just to extend the stun duration. Gabby trying to stand his ground with the BKB. But it's just not enough. He will fall. FBZ is a real danger. Slowly getting brought down. He will fall. And can anyone else end up... Uh, Again, take it out here. Nasumi charging after the Ricky, but he just keeps on jumping away towards all the pandas, and there's no detection. Okay, Shandy has gone. Uh, they're standing next to Yopaj, but there's no way these two are going to be able to kill him. Now, I, I like your point, right? You might see Yopaj jump in, Walrus punch someone, Natsumi following someone else. So the double desolator, while I agree it's clunky, like yes. it's uh, the fact that it kind of scales makes it okay. I I personally don't love it, I gotta say. I wonder if not, if maybe Natsumi could have gone for Assault QRS, but they obviously know. Like, I don't imagine he looked at Yopaj and like, what? You have a Deso too? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's very been... likely that they, they work together. Yeah, it, it's a, that awkward moment where like you got two cores that like to build the same item and it's like, I, I bet they, maybe they like flipped a coin in the Discord or something. like. Maybe the coin landed on its side. So, okay, I guess we both just buy Desolator then. Yeah, the whole a legacy of Kane sort of thing. It fell on the edge. Um, <laughs> by the way, that's to me. He's got a, he's got a BKB, so... Oh, channel dead. So, from now on, all those smoke screens do nothing for him. He doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, uh, this feels like a very, very difficult kill to try and find now for the side of Fnatic. And they're just always walking around as this, like three four man squad from boom right now just continuously looking for some sort of fights and engagements even actually they just give natsumi the gem it's very very rare you see a carry carrying this item but hey it seems to work out nicely that's i mean someone's got to carry it and it's he's probably the best one he's always going to be in the front line so jean was is if he's going to interact with it with uh, boom he's going to interact with natsumi first gets spot loses his life and you know, Boom can take advantage of that. The Ricky is too annoying to play against these fights. Definitely is. 
Uh, we do see second Roshan as well. Very, very fast respawn up in two seconds time. Oh, yeah. Um, and the line's drawn out there from Fnatic to maybe go to that direction. They might find it, but at the same time, Natsumi just do what he does and takes out another tower. I think he's been the one who's killed every tower so far on the side of Boom. Yes. He's just doing it's so definitely, much work. He's definitely been doing that, that, that does, which is what they need. And neither team has vision around Roche. Looks like uh, Fnatic's starting to establish theirs, but they need to be careful that it doesn't get removed. And Boom, they smell something's funny. They're like, listen, why are they here? Why are they defending this uh, Tier 3? If they don't defend this Tier 3, like they go and hit a few times and no one teleports. Boom, they have to make a choice. Are they going to go for uh, the bomb lane or do, will they go and contest Roche? They don't know it's up, but they might suspect. Yeah, it looks like they will start falling back. They, and they wisely destroyed the Tier 1 tower top to deny that close TP location there for Boom, but... Regardless, they still actually have to TP back to their own base and address this high ground siege, which, you know, the glyph will force them off. Maybe they could have actually stayed and just taken Roche. Gabby spots the D ruin. This will be a big thing if he can get it. He can TP back afterwards and they do get killed. Yeah, it was a big skewer probe that's found him there from FBZ. So no Willow for 38 seconds. And uh, yeah, let's see if... Well, Boom don't actually know Roshan's up yet, but they're heading in the general direction. They might spot it. But you're right, with this DD... Gabby, can they do something with this? Do they know he's there? This? No, they don't. Oh. No one. Ex Nova. It's a real danger. We'll get caught out boundless if he goes to connect onto FB set, but he will still be able to disengage. And they're chasing off right now. Zephyr just goes for the TP. Will make it out. And still, Gabby just feeling so confident here with the double damage. Will eventually uh, put a bit of pressure on the brakes and decide to fall back. And looks like Roshan's now going to be their next objective. Gabby playing it safe, you know, he respects the fact that FBZ has the uh, RP, so he's not trying too hard to be like, oh, you know, I'm going to chase him and kill him. Uh, even like even if the BKB is active, RP and four seconds of Natsumi on his ass, he would be, he would have lost his life. So they go for the Roche Fanatic. It's not the fastest. Uh, Boom Esports, they, looks like, they, well, they, if they smoked out now, they have time to contest it, but they are, t there you go. I... Uh, might not be quick enough here. Uh, I think that is going to be Roche going over towards the side of Fnatic. Shard on the deck, which they give to our melt. And, uh, okay, that's definitely going to help try and weather the storm of this powerful uh, lifestealer now that comes running at them. We'll see if they can take a while. They do an immediate smoke as well. Actually, no, sorry, that's Boom that smoked. Just eyes just crossed over each other. Thought it was the other teams. <laughs> but even still... How could you? Oh, no, Caster! No. Caster 2k. Oh, Absolutely terrible. Nice oh, big tree cut there onto Gabby. There's just no follow up though. Instead, it looks like X Nova's actually going to be the one who gets punished from that. He will get caught. Natsumi now also in some danger. And Armel, yeah. oh, and the little sword gets stuck in that same spot. But still, Natsumi able to get the rage off. Trying to retreat right now. Oh, it just infests into what Zephyr. Game. Absolutely heads up play there. Just gets the taxi ride back to his base. It's like, if you, hey, are you going? Take me with you, please. I do not want to stay here. Your Podge, uh, he's going to be able to make it out as well. Still, Fnatic starting to exert their map control. You know, they're starting to take control of uh, the enemy side. If they can get a tier two, they can get an outpost as well. We might see Boom starting to suffocate a little bit. They still have great team fight though. You still have the RP as well as an, a life stealer within power. Like that is a ton of damage. Enough, I would say, to bring down Fnatic if you can get good RP. Definitely, but that is, that's the thing, isn't it? He has to get a good RP. Without it, they're definitely lacking when it comes to these proper big fight, uh, five on five engagements. So yeah, definitely a lot of weight on poor old FBZ's shoulders right now. He's got to start delivering. Hey, when you pick the Magnus, you either tell your team, I'm going to get the five man RP or you don't pick him. Like that's, <laughs> that, that's how it works. It's like, hey, can you, like, I want Magnus, can you get five man RP? Yes, I can. Uh, well, not exactly, but he's going to go for the shard, so he just wants to make sure he can catch people out. It's still very hard to play against the Ricky, though. The vision advantage. Oh, here we go. Yeah, definitely. So let's jump in him. Got to grab it to KP, but they still got to get the kill instead. Zephyr's actually the first catch. Now they're going to pop out. Gabby, he's taking a lot of damage right now. He does yeah, heal up, though. Nice boundless onto the creep, but he's trying to stand his ground first. Natsumi is getting those Jingu stacks, and Natsumi actually has to run away himself. Still got a few seconds left on the rage. BKB's obviously already been dropped, and now he's just stuck. Has to stand his yeah. ground. He can't do it. He gets taken out and still Fnatic pushing forwards. Can they get another one? Or oh, if that bound is connected, they might have dived into the base for it, but they will decide to fall back. But regardless, three kills. They don't even lose their Aegis. And yeah, they are really taking a strong lead now in this game number two. 
FBZ is all uh, he's got the RP, but he doesn't have not so much to deal with damage, so it's gonna be pointless. But maybe by the way, have you noticed every fight fanatic they do one thing, they always aim for the supports. Either yeah. X Nova or Sephir, no fight begins without one of these two dead. So they just get that numerical advantage and then they're like, yeah, let's uh now we can go for a fight. Gabby uh, doesn't want to go high ground when he has no health here. It's a smart decision. Uh yeah, and probably, you know, with the, with the glyph, if that being wise, saying they don't want to push the issue. You know, there's no way they're going to be able to, like, go in without losing the Aegis and there's two glyphs. Smart choice by, uh, by Fnatic. Yeah, it's definitely a good discipline. You know? want to make sure they don't throw it away. As you were saying earlier, you know, this could potentially be their last tournament and they just want to make sure they look as solid as they possibly can. And Gabby also completed up the Daedalus as well, so his damage output has just skyrocketed even more. And yeah, the, the, the supports on the side of Boo are just going to be quaking in their poor little brown boots. Because, yeah, it's just been the target again and again from Fnatic, and it seems to be working out very nicely. Oh, by the way, one, one cool thing Armel has is the Basher. So he can interrupt the... Um, What's it called? The Fiend's Grip just by swashbuckling in. I that's one of those I love how it's one of those unplayable, you know, there's no answers to its mechanic, right? Like there's no way you can counter this. Um and I, and I kinda like some of the Dota has some of these. This uh, Basher Pangol is Pangolier, the Doom with the Agonims, you just doom yourself. There's nothing some heroes can do about it. You just jump on it, there's like that's it. You know, that we can't use items, we can't do anything. There's no way to block it, there's no way to I just, I don't know, I have a lot of, I enjoy seeing some of those broken mechanics and, and Dota get balanced, if that makes sense. Like, they're broken and they're fun and they're balanced. Yeah, I mean, as long as if it doesn't make it completely overpowered where once someone picks that, it's just guaranteed game over. But yeah. there's still some ways of playing around it. It's just, you know, it's cool Ooh. to have those separate heroes or little niches. Double damage. And uh, Fnatic, they know about it. Are they going to take it? This would be a great way to go to the high ground. Yeah, it definitely will be. I'm sure they want to give that over towards uh, the old Monkey King if they can. She will now pick it up. Now, do they just go high ground or do they try and look for a fight? Ah, uh, no. Uh, unfortunately, the age has just expired. So Fnatic might feel a little bit nervous about forcing this high ground and decide, you know what? Let's wait a bit more. I mean, they are growing their network with advantage. The longer the game goes, the better it is for Fnatic. It's on, the onus is on Boomy Sports to make something happen. And, uh, but Fnatic, so we'll see Fnatic, do they feel like they're taking a fight or do they just feel like farming? Yeah, well, the, uh, the graph definitely supports what you say, and now an 86% win probability in the favor of Fnatic. Do you, I, I feel like that's a little high. I don't think it's quite that one-sided. 86? Yeah, yeah, right? It's like 75 feels like a good number. Yeah. FBC yeah. gets a good, I mean... Give it BC gets good RP. Oh, fight. KB okay, jumps in aggressively. Actually gets slept though before he can get his ult off. Meanwhile, Yo Paj just finds Januel, immediately removing the supports, getting the numbers into their favor, but still X Nova does get separated and caught. Natsumi with the good crown gets hit from the stun. But regardless, with the four stuffs, he's able to disengage. But a buyback was actually expended there mm. from Januel. Maybe a little bit uh got a little bit carried away with himself on that one. Yeah, that's something scary to be to for them, right? If if Jamal gets caught again, he won't have a buyback, and suddenly you're going to be down a, a one member for at least a minute. I think something close to like 70 seconds. Fnatic, this is kind of ballsy now for them. Well, they do have a double damage win on the gap. I think it's a, it's just used going high ground with it. I don't know. The enemy team has all their abilities available, all their ultimates. Sorry. Yeah, they're definitely eager for a fight boom. If it does come their ways, more than ready for it, and. Uh... Thought maybe Fnatic might have tried going up to the high ground there at the bot, but they just shoved the wave and then fall back, not wanting to overstep, the, uh, you know, overstep a little bit. Even with the double damage rune on Gabby, I, I guess it's really what that Aegis advantage. It's it's very easy for you to get caught by an RP and lose the game. Like that's Fnatic very they respect FBZ too much to be like, no, we we'll just go high ground and you know we'll, we'll, we're four melee heroes. Like it can be easily that you know, they all get RP, they all die. Mm -hmm. Gabby though. He does have the Satanic. Satanic and Boundless Strike, you pretty much heal instantly to full. Yeah. It's as, very if, hard to as if you did as if you don't do that naturally from Boundless Strike. <laughs> yeah, just the added bonus of the Satanic, you know? You, you can't argue with it. I'm sure he's happy with the extra bit of life still there. But still, Roshan number three. 
potentially up in 25 seconds now. We'll see if it's going to be another fast spawn or not. It seems like that's... I think we've had one long spawn all day. It's just been yes. nearly instant spawns again and again. It's uh, pretty damn nutty to see. I mean, it, it's entertaining though. It forces fights non-stop as a result. So I'm happy to see it. These are Southeast Asian players. They don't need a reason to have fights forced on them. They're going to fight regardless. All right? <laughs> we, please respect the region. And ah, see, uh, see, you, you ruined it. Damn it, you ruined it. <laughs> I I apologize, uh, everyone. That is completely my fault. You know, cast a curse at its finest, just there. All right. It's, yeah. like, it's like these things have been instantaneous, instantaneous, and then we get like one of the longest possible. All right, both and boom, they want to take a fight now. This is not too bad. Even Fnatic lose it because there's no ages for them to take after. Yeah. Let's see who's. They find the high ground ward, but it does also get spied out themselves. And it looks like Fnatic want to try and defend Whoa. this ward if they can. KP jumps in, but gets immediately skewed right now. It's still the almost there. The Sleeping Dark came through to deny the RP connection. Finally, the RP is there on towards the Monkey King, but two, three supports actually already dropped. FPZ in danger will disengage, and now Yopaj sort of separated. Pops his BKB, but just the damage that comes in from Gabby is too much to deal with. And the Monkey King isn't even done. Oh, he just Lord. found FBZ. How did he know he was there? But the Fiend's Grip turned around from X Nova, locking down the Monkey King. Where is the response? Where is the help? It is nowhere to be seen. Gabby is dead. X Nova at least going to get traded away. But Natsumi, he could just stand his ground and beat into anyone. There's no Monkey King. He's really the only person he fears at this stage. And he's just got easy kills. By the way, Armel started that fight in the worst possible situation. He got like moved in their opposite direction. They were getting, they got a good sleep on uh, FBZ, which if sorry, see it's FBZ by the way. Uh, and the, thanks to that, he was able, they were able to get KP to do his uh, primal, uh, primal split. Otherwise, that could have been really bad for them. Overall, looks like a victory for, uh, it's a victory for Bumispo, even though X Nova had to buy back and well die back in fact. Yeah, not quite the ideal fight that Fnatic were looking for. I mean, that was pretty much a 3k gold swing as it was and 5,000 experience as well. It's a big old buff up there that Boom needed to, you know, start trying to level this game out a bit. And they're trying to finish this tier 2, but the respawns are coming in. The Rage will secure the kill at the very least, but can Fnatic try and get any sort of counter grab? Atumi in a bit of danger, the Bounder Strike misses, but he will just infest straight into Zephyr, but the Sleeper Dart denying the retreat. Out comes the Terrorize as well, lands onto the both of them. It looks like Natsumi will be able to get away, maybe not the same for Zephyr, actually, never mind. Turns on the Ted Khaleesi's, eventually will drop to the dot damage there of KP, but still, just nothing is stopping this life seed just running at people. The, speed, the movement speed bonus for KP, allowing him to disengage, nice Gilly Crown as well with the Maze. All right, so after that is just the support Rubik that ends up dropping. It does just waste a bit of time. And, uh, good play by Fnatic. They got that kill without their heavy damage dealers, right? Both Gabby and Armel are dead. Are they really going to go for more? They're just doing all they can to annoy them. And Roshan does spawn. This one has a refresher shot. Massive for Boom if they can give it to FBZ. Fnatic, I mean, it's all, I mean, it's always it's good on everyone. If you can get, get it on Gabby with double BKB, double Wukong, double uh, Satanic, all very strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be very, very big. Big, probably like maybe more impactful than the actual Aegis itself, as you were saying, with the amount of big ultimates that are actually, are actually in this game. So it's a very valuable target to get. So far, it is Boom that has the vision control in the area. Got a couple of high ground wards. Fnatic are going to uh, at least take away some of it. Even still, Boom, though. They're already smoked up. They're uh, infested up inside of Yopage right now. Seeing if anyone on the side of Fnatic becomes easy pickings. But it's all the cores of uh, all the cores of Fnatic. They have buyback on Boom. It's only Natsumi, so that's something that you're, you know, Fnatic. They're way more willing to take these fights uh, around the road. If you lose one or two of your cores, they buy back. You secure it. It's still worth it as long as you bring somebody somebody down from Boom. Yeah, definitely. And there's a lot to uh, play for in this coming fight. And their smoke has now timed out, so Fnatic get the immediate read about where they are. KP just sat inside of the uh, the pit at the moment. It doesn't look like they're too sure about what they want to do either. Everyone's just sort of hanging around. Actually, a second smoke now getting used from Boom. So they really want to force this oh, fight. KP. KP, that's going to be a really nice target if they can burst him down quickly before he can pop the ult. Terrorize coming out, makes the space, and KP's going to be able to get it off the RP. It misses as a result. This is a terrible start here for Boom. They've already lost the hero. They're almost with BKP's been expended. Your pass has to use his as well to run away from the sleeping dart. 
and they're in complete disarray right now. Another grab on some Natsumi. The bash is coming through there with the rolling thunder. Can he do anything? No, he cannot. And the rest of the squad get picked up there inside the triangle area. Looks like the Ruby is going to die there for Zephyr. Yopage in some danger. And four people gone just like that. The only survivor is FBZ. And Gabby very upset because he wanted that rampage. Armel got a really nice shield crash. He's got the Agon Scepter, so he gets a couple of swashbuckles. Quite lucky that they, the Skull Basher triggered, uh, triggered on Natsumi. Roshan is up, but we'll see if Fnatic wants to go for it. They want to go for Raxes. Two people without buyback here. FBZ, no RP. And uh, really not seeing how how you're going to be able to handle this if you're Boom Esports. Maybe, yeah. a, maybe a great skewer, but... Uh, uh, you don't even have the shards on the Magnus. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think it's like they're going to lose two sets of barracks most likely. And after that, it feels like they need an RP on like all three cores. Just, yep. they absolutely need it. It's the only way to get back on into this one. I mean, the buildings just dropped so quickly. Two sets gone. And they're looking to get Megas right now. Still 25 seconds about the lives. He has buyback and he may be forced FBZ. to use it. FBZ, nice skewer backwards right now. Still no buyback been expended for the life stealer. And the Lotus Orb denying any sort of Telekalesis throw back. And is this just Megas right now? Maybe a little bit of grief for Boom holding on to onto this buyback for so long. Charge it through, Yopaz trying to make the space there of his own BKB. Is, the is in front. There's going to be RP, oh. but the skewer doesn't do anything worse than the BKB. And in all honesty, I, I don't know what else can be done right now. And they might be able to get this grab on towards KP, but he's still able to get off the primal. And he's just going to run away there with the old pandlings. And yeah, he's safe with the storm one gone. Actually, boom, maybe overextending trying to get this kill. And yeah, FBZ, miles out position. Down for 70, no buyback. I mean, they could go back and do Roche, or they could end. They could yeah, really I mean, either one, but they they want a Roche. I mean, this is Fnatic's last uh, tournament with these players. You might as well make sure you you don't give them even a tiny chance to come back. And they are going to go for Roche, but by the time you, you FBC is up, he's going to have the RP available. And Fnatic, just uh, honestly, this was the Gab I felt like this was the Gabby show. You know, game one, it was like, oh, yeah, he's okay, but this game, he will really carry the team. Yeah, 100%. Monkey King doing all the things he wants. Pretty much a full 10k ahead of Natsumi. Very similar to game number one, but at least this time around, as you were saying, he feels like he's an actual powerhouse and difficult to deal with. Uh, I mean, even after that, they complete another round of items. Abyssal Blade got completed for Gabby, Abyssal for KP as well, and an overwhelming blink for the Pangalea. So just more means at just making the lives of Boom miserable here. I just love that that's to be is like, okay, I'm gonna take the life stealer. Okay, there's a smoke screen, I'm gonna take the BKB, and there's like, oh, there's there's like three abilities now that pierce it with the two with a basher and two abyssals. So uh, it's, I feel I feel for the guy. You know, that's to me he had a really good performance, but it's just not enough. No, it's uh it's not quite working out this time. Roll thought to come here, they just go straight away. Nice boundless lands onto the back lines as well. The poor old life Life's stealer. He can't do anything. He's just controlled way too much. There is going to be the buyback. Let's see if they can force Fnatic away from their base. I don't think they can. Both tier fours gone. The Aegis, uh, the Ancient, sorry, is exposed. Snowball actually drags them out of their base with that perfectly tied boundless lands onto that Tsumi with the Abyssal Blade locked down. The Life Stealer, he's just dead. And that is it. GG is called. Boom Esports are done with this series and they're done with the tournament as they get taken out by Fnatic 2-0. That means that, to, to, that tomorrow we'll be seeing Fnatic going up against Polaris Esports. But uh, congratulations, Fnatic. They stay alive in the tournament, still having a few more days, hopefully, uh, together as a team. I mean, could, I don't know where, where, who to praise this one. We saw our there's the KP was getting his ultimate off in many situations where it's just like sliver of health left. Like there's time when when FBZ uses the RP and KP still manages to stay to get the ultimate off in that situation. Uh, John Well and DJ, I didn't think they had this incredible play, but them staying alive kept it very difficult for Boom to engage on them. Whereas Zephyr as well as Exnova kept getting targeted in each fight and just did not have a game at all. Yeah, definitely. It was just the three cores on the side of Fnatic all doing equally as well. It feels just yeah, able to come out of the lane phase very nice and 
they just didn't really slow down. I mean, there was at one point where Nova looked like they could potentially, you know, start taking a lead. So, like, they were head by... Yeah. Uh, were they head at one point? Actually, no, according they to the were, gold lead, they, they were head by 1,000. That was it. <laughs> it was like they were uh, ahead for most of the game, right? It's like a tidy lead, but they were ahead for most of the game. They're 25 minutes in, uh, but just wasn't enough. And this is kind of an issue we've seen, been seeing with Life Solar, that his damage is not bursty, you know? Mm. Like... Uh, they, they how many they caught K, KPE and he's just like sliver of health. You think if you had any other carry, he would have been able to shred him. But that's sort of that's the true. issue with the life slither. He's a body, and you're not getting much damage from the Magnus. Your sports are dying very early in the fight, and your patch doesn't scale on the on the tusk. Unfortunately, it's uh, just wasn't enough for them. Yeah, no, he's definitely he's saying the Tusk is someone that he needs to snowball out of control. No pun intended. And uh, mm -hmm. he, unfortunately for him, he just didn't, you know, the double desolator plan also not quite panning out. Um, but that, that kind of feels like the first series we've seen as well with Ricky, where it felt like the Ricky wasn't really a problem, to be honest. There was a couple yes. of times he got some good sleeping darts in, but not nowhere near as much as we've seen in the past. Yeah, I agree. Uh, oftentimes we see the Ricky walk around with the Mirai right behind him. They're getting all these pickoffs one by one. It's like, oh, okay. But this time, this game is sort of like, to be fair, he got it very late. He had his uh, shot four minutes, like 19, 30, like 19 minutes, 30 seconds. He got it. And uh, it wasn't the easiest game. You're up against, uh, like, uh, Magnus who's always skewering away. You're up against a uh, Lifestyle who can just maybe magic immune. So it wasn't the best Ricky mm -hmm. game. He still made it work to a certain degree, right? It wasn't the broken Ricky we've seen before. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, anything else that we could say after that series? Uh, I mean, second game, definitely a little well, a little bit more one-sided. Mm. Not quite as even as the 65-minute game we had before that, for sure. But regardless, you know, it was still an entertaining one. Boomy Sports, mm. unfortunately for them, are now out. Cannot come back onto this anymore. The the power of lower brackets, eh? It is do or die. Um but yeah, Fnatic pushing themselves forward. Who did you say they were playing against next? Uh, they'll be playing against Polaris, who mm. won game one. So we might be in for a really long series because you know, Fnatic, their victory in game one took 60 minutes. Polaris, their victory in the third game took something like 75 minutes. So tomorrow, maybe we're going to be in for a really, really long time. But we're going to have two matches tomorrow. It's going to be Boom versus, sorry, um, Fnatic versus uh, Polaris, as well as Blacklist International versus Talon. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be... You know, we're going to have our finalists, our top three after that. That will be it. And then we'll start to see which teams are really going to be able to start pulling ahead and, uh, yeah, get themselves closer and closer to that grand final position. They're all fighting for it. But remember, only two teams can actually get there. So we shall see in the future. But that is us done for the day, ladies and gentlemen. No more dotes to come. As sad as it is, it must come to an end. But, hey, we were treated to two hour-long plus games in one sitting. So, I mean, I don't know about you, Otomo, but I'm ready for a break. <laughs> I'm definitely knackered, you know. I definitely I haven't eaten anything since uh, since breakfast, you know. Mm. I gotta go see my son. Uh, I'm glad, you know. I mean, I was supporting Fnatic in game one for my heart, but in game two, I supported them for my fatigue. I was like, I'm tired. You guys, <laughs> could you win? This would be nice for us. Uh, but yeah, congratulations to Fnatic, Boom Esports. Hopefully, they don't disband, and hopefully mm. that uh, we see them in the next DPC season doing well as well. Yeah, hopefully we do. And, uh, yeah, only time will tell, but. Thanks for tuning in, everyone, and we will see you all the same time tomorrow for some more BTS dotes. See you then. Bye-bye.